Good day, Guardians. At the recording of this video, we are less than 24 hours away from the launch of the Witch Queen. And with the Witch Queen, and any yearly DLC or season, come some new drops, some new power levels, and this year, a new raid. With the raid only 11 days out from the start of the campaign, many people are trying to get ready for day one. Day one is going to be a big, exciting day. Probably some server problems, a lot of excitement, a lot of community streamers streaming their content. But for the rest of us, it's the day that everyone is panicked to get to. We need to get our power levels up, we need to get our equipment ready to go, and we need to be able to get there quickly and efficiently. So today, I'm going to go through and show you a few tricks and a few tools to be able to effectively and efficiently get to level without wasting your time or your drops. Bungie states that its power caps are the floor, soft cap, power cap, and hard cap. Most people call them powerful and pinnacle caps. 1350 is what everyone's going to start out at. All of your current gear is going to get automatically leveled up to 1350. 1530 is what most people in the community are going to presume that the contest mode for the day one raid will be set at. So there's a few different things that we're going to have to take into account. The first, save the raid date. March 5th, 11 days after the launch of the Witch Queen. I'm counting for 10 because day one's almost going to be too much for most people to be able to play in or the servers are going to have problems. We do have until then to start. And if you want that day one clear, that's the day you want to do it on. So what's the most effective way to get there? Well, most people typically go through and do, they grind out the power, uh, powerfuls, pinnacles from the playlist. They do playlist activities. They do roll drops. But this year, there's going to be a few things different. Legendary campaign difficulty. This is probably going to be one of the best ways to go through and get your drops. Double chest rewards, one to three extra chests per mission. So up to six rewards. There's going to be additional XP, upgrade modules, and glimmer. We're also going to be able to get the Throne World armor unlocks faster, and we're going to be able to get up there a little faster to that soft cap because of that higher risk and higher reward. However, if you finish the campaign, we're going to be getting a full set of gear at 1520. That's 20 levels into the soft cap. That almost halfway eliminates our powerful grind. We're also going to get eight upgrade modules. Now, through certain tweets from the Bungie devs and from members of the Bungie community management team, we know that we're going to be getting eight items at 1520 and that they are going to be blue. So these are going to be enhancement fodder. Hence the up eight upgrade modules. You'll be able to get your favorite gear, whatever gear you want to take into the raid, and use that 1520 level gear from completing the legendary campaign and those upgrade modules and get them up to level for what you need. You don't necessarily have to go out and farm a whole bunch of other fodder. The other thing that they're saying is that this legendary difficulty will not be at Grandmaster Nightfall level. It's going to be just above Legend, so somewhere between Legend and Master. If you've done the GOA Dungeon Solo, you can expect something a little easier than that, likely. There's going to be more red bar foes, a few more, dif more difficult enemies. And if you decide to handle this as a team, it will not be the same as if you were to solo this. It will scale up, not necessarily one for one, but all the rewards will be there. And if you're as a team, you can expect some raid-like mechanics. One revive token per player, and you only have 40 seconds combined for all your reses. So now that we know where some of that equipment is going to be coming from, whether it be from world drops, patrols, um, lost sectors, campaign, what do we do with it? Well, there's a few different tools that we're going to be using to kind of figure out what it is that we're going to be doing with this equipment. The first is something along the lines of what you're seeing on your screen right here. Power level progress. This is a new tool from Destiny Recipes, and it will show you basically where you stand with your current gear. Now, what we're looking at right now is some characters that I created in Beyond Light, specifically to show off what this tool can do. Across the top, you're going to see eight little bars. I call them pips. And this represents one power level for each one of the eight equipment items that you have in your character. Anytime you go up by a full level, it's representative of all your items being one level higher. But you can see here that my helmet, the scavenger suit helmet, is 19 levels below my average. My average, my max equipable, 1119. 
Now, 1120 is because I have my artifact mod at plus one. So when we talk about power, we want to talk about base power level. That means equipment only. And my helm being 19 below means that if I were to go out right now and farm up a helmet, I would gain 19 of these little pips. 19 would represent two full levels plus three more pips. Part of the reason I left two characters on this screen is also because these weapons currently equipped on my hunter also represent power available to my Titan, a character that was just freshly created, hasn't even logged into the New Light campaign yet, and if they do, their drops will start as if they were at 1109 in power level. This will come up important later when we start talking about strategy and how to best level up all three characters for the raid. There's another tool that's available out there right now, and this is one that was used by myself and many others throughout the Beyond Light campaign and that is Destiny Power Bars. This will show you the exact same thing. It's a little smaller, a little cleaner. If you want to load it up on a mobile device, this might be the way to go. It shows you all the same information, and at the bottom it'll tell you exactly what you should be doing, just like the other one from Destiny Recipes will show you. In this case, world drops are my best way to get to 1250. Once we go beyond 1250, it'll start recommending either powerfuls or pinnacles, depending on what level I'm at, as to what to get next. The third tool, and the one that most people use for those who don't want to have quite this level of integration or don't trust the login information, is just a power calculator. Now most people, myself included, used to do this on a pen and piece of paper uh, or Excel, but the benefit to this particular power calculator is you can manually feed in and start modeling things out. So the other two tools are showing current information from Beyond Light. Here I've modeled out what's gonna happen if I started with one character only, got all the way up to the pinnacle cap, and then started a fresh character at 350, 1350 base. If those weapons were maxed, all the drops for this character would start dropping as if I was at 1140, 11, sorry, 1417, instead of at 1350, which is currently the floor, or will be the floor. These three tools I'll have linked in the description, so you can use those as you see fit. Now, a couple of the other features that are in one of these tools, Destiny Recipes is what I'm gonna to feature today, will also give you a little added benefit. On top of telling you what you need to go out and get in order to get uh, up to certain levels without wasting your drops, it also, if you click on the banner, selects a specific character, and during Witch Queen, this will show more relevant challenges. Since we're currently in Beyond Light, I'll mimic it just by saying show all available. Now, in this particular instance, it'll show all the stuff that's going away However, it gives me a list of what's currently available to me, what power increase it will give me, and if I want to, I can simulate getting loot for a specific slot to see what it's going to do for this character. So in the case of my hunter, if I was to go out and find that helmet, it should model exactly what's going on. Now, unfortunately, I'm having a little bit of internet problem here, so it's gonna freeze up on me. In Destiny Recipe, sorry, in uh, Destiny Power Bars, it only gives you that one little piece down below, and it doesn't give you any specific details. But again, if you're one of those people who knows what's out there and you don't want to be visiting a website constantly, this is one that's going to be just as fast and easy. Now, one other benefit to Destiny Recipes is the Loot Companion. And inside the Loot Companion, there'll be a little mark that'll allow you to automatically lock items that are at the highest level. Obviously, we're having a little bit of difficulty here in the last couple of days leading up to the Witch Queen. I don't blame Destiny Recipes for this. All the Destiny web tools have been slowed lately, uh, just leading up as they're patching everything through the API. So I will say under the Loot Companion, there'll be two primary boxes. One will say to lock your highest level equipment in each slot. This will save you from actually deleting anything that might have been useful as you go through and get all of your loot and all of your um, drops from the various places. Now, a couple of things that you are going to want to remember as we go forward. Prime engrams, drop at a fixed level. So the best place to use those things are right away. I wouldn't necessarily say drop out of the campaign and go pop a powerful engram immediately. Finish off that campaign mission, then go back to the tower and visit Master Rahul, get that prime engram decoded. Same thing with umbrals. They may fill in a slot that's falling a little bit behind, like that helm on my hunter. 
the powerful and pinnacle drops are always going to drop at a positive to your currently max level. So in the case of my um, Titan that had just started the campaign was at base level. Those powerfuls and pinnacles would drop, including those weapons, not just the armor. So getting those weapons in there first, whether they're equipped or not, is going to be the way to go. Your vendor and challenge rewards are based on your power level at the time they're claimed, not when they're earned. So when you go out and you do your eight challenges for any of your Pinnacle playlists, when you do your Hawthorne bounties or anything else, you're going to want to go and claim those once all of your equipment is at an appropriate level or at least up to average so that it get the most possible increase out of that turn in. When you use these tools, and I did have a screenshot, but obviously it's not working, uh, all exotics will have an impact on your max light level. So if you go through and you have four exotics that are all at cap in four different slots, the average light level on the next drop will take all of those into account. They don't have to all to be equipped. They do have to be available to you somewhere, whether it be in your postmaster, in your vault, on another character's inventory, it doesn't matter. As long as that character can use it, it will take it into account when it gets your next drop level. And of course, you don't want to delete anything. That's your, currently your max highest level in that slot. Couldn't tell you how many times I've deleted one of those myself. So, the next thing you want to keep in mind is the order to level your characters in. When I showed those levels for the weapons, obviously the weapons for my hunter would have impacted dramatically the level for my titan. So, when you go through and you level, you want to concentrate on one class, get it as high as it possibly can for that week, then move on to your second class, get it as high as you possibly can for that week, then move on to your third. Everything working out well, and assuming that RNG actually favors you, on week two, your third class will be your highest. So you want to work from your third, get that as high as possible, and then work backward to your second most powerful, and then your third most powerful. In theory, if you want to go into the day one raid, the class you plan on taking is the first class that you should be playing on Witch Queen at launch. That will should, mathematically, and assuming that RNG plays out for you, wind up being your highest light level by the time the raid drops. One thing that I did put an asterisk on at the bottom of this particular slide is that you always want to wait to pick up a vendor reward until your powerfuls and pinnacles, sorry, or powerful and pinnacle until all your underleveled armor and weapons are, will no longer give you a level by bringing them up to average. In the case of the hunter that I showed you, I would not want to pick up a powerful or a pinnacle until that helm had come up to average. Otherwise, I'm just wasting it. I'm wasting at least two levels based on that particular example that that powerful or pinnacle could have granted if I had waited. That's all I have for you today. I'm only going to wish you the best of luck in the Witch Queen campaign. If you're going off for the day one raid, best of luck on that as well. If this video comes out before the servers come down, make sure you get all your weapons into your vault. Most of these APIs and apps are probably not going to work on day one. So you're going to want to have everything in your vault so you don't have to do a lot of character switching. If you want to see how to do some builds for the day one raid, I'll link a video to a optimization build I did using D2 Armor Picker and Destiny Item Manager. And if you want to hear some of the insights about the TWABs or about a bunch of the news that's been coming out over the past few weeks leading up to the Witch Queen, maybe you haven't had a chance to catch up, I'll leave a link to the Canadians and Cheese podcast that I co-host with Diet Cola and GNC Caleb. Until next time, good luck, and I'll see you in the Witch Queen.